potato chips. This morning on today's family, raising healthy eaters. For a lot of parents, teaching your kids to eat the right foods is nearly an impossible test. And to avoid fights, a lot of folks just give in and let the kids make all the decisions. Potato chips. Potato chips. Crunch, crunch. I don't want no lunch. You crazy? You fed a baby chili? Frankenstein. What do you want? 30 packets of ketchup. All right. Is this familiar territory at your dinner table? If so, you're not alone. Experts have long feared the obesity crisis results from many factors, including kids who want to determine their own menus. According to a new Time Magazine article, the number one vegetable for kids is, ooh la la, French fries? And one in five kids by the age of two eat candy every day. What's a parent to do? As long as they were nursing or you know using formula, I felt like they were getting the nutrition that they needed, but the minute I put them on solid food, I thought it was overwhelming. Gretchen Larson of Camarillo, California, never knew what response she was going to get when it came to feeding her two sons, Adam and Graham. As a parent, exposing your children to healthy choices is of great concern to Gretchen. Breakfast is their biggest meal, and they usually want that at about 6.30. They seem to have kind of three favorites that we cycle through, which are oatmeal, waffles, and pancakes. They don't eat as much lunch, and they have specific choices that they want at lunch, quesadillas and peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and dinner is practically non-existent. Gretchen turned to her sister, Christina Schmidt, a nutritionist and creator of Baby Bistro Box, for some help. If kids don't want to eat, that's, that's completely normal, especially with toddlers. Toddlers might go and eat one meal a day, or they might go a whole day and just maybe a couple of snacks, and that's fine. Their diets tend to nutritionally balance out. Still, Gretchen continues to express concerns. I want to make sure they're getting enough protein and enough vitamin A and enough green vegetables. I'm hopeful that by introducing them to the correct foods early on that maybe we can avoid some of the problems that I've been reading about with childhood diabetes and the obesity epidemic. Samantha Heller is a registered dietitian at the NYU Medical Center and a contributor to Health Magazine. Samantha, good to see you. Good to see you. So why is it so important early on? Is it kind of an imprinting in, in a sense? It is an imprinting in a sense. When you instill healthy eating habits in your kids, those are the habits they will tend to keep for life, whether they're good or they're bad. And also, what you feed your children, even when they're little ones, can have a profound impact on their risk for diabetes, cancer, and heart disease later in life. So are we giving our kids too much power when it, when it comes to their diet? I think we might be. I think what you want to do is have a structured eating plan, three meals a day, a couple of snacks. But if your toddler doesn't want to eat at those times, well, mm. then that's okay. And not to force them to eat when they're not hungry. We want them to stay in touch with their hunger and fullness cues. Right, because I remember growing up, I'm not blaming my mom, but, you know, a, yeah, clean your, your plate. There are children in Africa who are starving for a good meal. That's right. And, and that mentality has stayed with us not only clean our plate but we feel like food shows us as better as it shows love and we need to sort of back off from that a little bit. This survey, the Gerber Feeding in, uh, Infant and Toddler Survey, right. examined the eating patterns of kids between two and between 4 and 24 months. Right, 3,000 kids. Yeah, what were some of these findings? Well, initially some of the findings were what we mentioned before, that the primary vegetable are French fries for these wow. little kids. If you can even classify a French fries vegetable, which <laughs> I just can't do that. And also that they're eating desserts and sweetened beverages mm -hmm. all the time. Now we have new findings just revealing today for the first time to the public, these little ones are eating too much sodium, 10% more than the upper tolerable limit, which means they're eating junk, fast food, and, mm -hmm. and, and all these all processed foods. And hand in hand with that, they're not getting enough potassium, which is for muscle and bone function, 66% less than they need. And finally, what these new findings are saying is these kids are losing the ability to self-regulate. Mm -hmm. So, so it, they're eating are, too much. The, high, the, high, the foods that are good for them, like the bananas and, and certain things like that, are, are they not getting enough the fresh fruits and vegetables? That's right, because the junk food is filling them up, so they don't want the fresh fruits and vegetables, and we're setting their taste preferences by giving them junk early. Okay, we got some emails here. Let's. Uh, the okay. first one is from Lisa from Columbia, South Carolina. How should I handle a real picky eater. The only vegetable or fruit he'll eat is applesauce. I'm concerned about him not getting the right nutrition. He'll drink fruit juice, take some multivitamin, but his diet consists of unhealthy foods. Hot dogs, hamburgers, pizza, etc. Yikes. Yikes. Well, I have to say, Lisa, not to make you feel bad, but why is why did he have those foods yeah. to begin with? He can't go buy them. Yeah, he can't go buy them, so it's up to the parents. Um, but now that he's already a picky eater, slowly start to shift to healthy 
healthier foods, make food fun, don't make healthy food a punishment, and, and let him self-regulate a little bit. If he's not hungry, don't force him to eat. Second email comes from Suzanne, Columbia, Maryland. I've got an 18-month-old toddler. He doesn't like milk, so I've been adding chocolate to it. He loves it. My husband, however, thinks chocolate is not necessarily good. Our son has to drink milk without chocolate. Is the chocolate harmful, and how much milk should my 18-month-old be drinking? Well, those are great questions. First of all, we're born with a taste for sweet, and what you're doing by giving him chocolate is intensifying that sweetness craving, not the light sweet that comes from fruit, obviously, initially breast milk. And also, kids don't have to have milk. We want them to have the calcium and the vitamin D and the nutrients in milk, but they may not like it. So they can have yogurt, they can have cheese, they can have tofu, they can have other sources. So what, for, for a parent struggling out there right it's now, what are, what's some of the advice? So say, first of all, be persistent with new foods? Yes, 10 to 15 exposures to a new food. The parents have to be patient. I know it's difficult. Make food fun. Make it, have the child be involved. Make it, make it a game. Cut mm -hmm. foods into fun shapes. And then also you say an easy way to cut fat is to serve low-fat or non-fat milk. After age of two, obviously check with your pediatrician. They don't need that saturated animal fat for mm -hmm. development. Before two, it's good. After two, it's not a good fat. Breakfast, of course, very important. Breakfast of Torps helps with their energy, their mood, their cognitive abilities. Mm -hmm. And if they see you as a parent eating healthy, they learn to do And it. you've experienced that yourself, yes, haven't you? That's yes, that's right. Try Absolutely. doing it. It's down to the parents. What you eat, how you are makes a difference. Get together with other parents, like-minded parents. Make sure your caregivers are all on that same healthy eating page. You know, get a grassroots effort at home and in your community. All right, Samantha Heller, a lot of good advice. Thank you My so pleasure. much. Coming up next, our Queer Eyes.